Reconciliation is dead, or so it's been said. But is that really so? Tansei, hello. I am a two-spirit Nehio, a Pitiko Susana Squail. I'm an indigenous queer Cree Métis woman. I tell you that not because it defines me, but because it does tell you the experience of the lens through which I experience the world. And so my story goes, from my ancestors to me and to those that will follow. I want to first acknowledge that we are gathered here today on lands that are deeply connected to Indigenous peoples who have historically lived and who currently live in this territory. These groups include the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. And like my ancestors in Treaty 6 territory, I recognize that these particular lands have been a deep source of learning for Indigenous peoples here. And I am committed to respecting the traditional knowledge that they have gathered from these lands and to learning from their experiences on them. Indeed, we have learned of some of those darkest experiences. From 2008 to 2015, 6,500 Indian residential school survivors shared heart-wrenching testimony at gatherings held across Turtle Island for the Truth and Reconciliation Project. They shared their experiences of exposure to shame, violence, and abuse, and the impact those acts had on their lives and the lives of those that followed. The TRC came out with a final report in December 2015 that contained 94 calls to action for reconciliation between Canadians and Indigenous peoples in Canada. Ever since then, reconciliation has been quite the buzzword. But what about the 94 actions? Can reconciliation be accomplished? And if so, who's responsible? Can it start from just one person? Or will it take an entire community? Before I answer those questions, I first want to share what reconciliation definitely is not. And perhaps that will help with our understanding. Reconciliation is not tokenistic. What do I mean by tokenistic? Well, for example, if through your good intentions of being inclusive, you are inviting us to come sing, dance, and drum at your event, but you haven't invited us to the decision-making, planning, and resource-sharing table, then you're being tokenistic. <laughs> you're inviting us to entertain you, but not to meaningfully engage with you. You get the benefit of us being there, but really, we aren't. <clears throat> Second, reconciliation cannot be about beneficence. That is giving to someone without asking what they need, but rather deciding for them. It's about giving to feel good for giving not necessarily to make a constructive difference in the life of someone else, but to make a difference in your own. We can't possibly know what someone else needs until we have a conversation with them. And charity isn't positive if the recipient ends up feeling indebted. That's just another form of a power imbalance. And third, reconciliation is not performative allyship. So let me explain. Allyship is when a non-marginalized group comes together to, ad to leverage their power and privilege to advocate alongside a marginalized group. This can be a good thing when it's used to bring about social justice and change. Performative allyship is play acting. It's professing support and solidarity for show. It's not really helpful, rather it's about self-benefit. It draws the attention away from the marginalized group and puts it on the non-marginalized group who are really just trying to look good in the eyes of others. For example, someone takes a picture of themselves and posts it on Instagram while they're out with us early in the day, marching and with their drums, singing the women's warrior song to protect the lands and the waters. But later that day, they're out with their non-Indigenous friends and they don't speak up when someone says a racial slur, or starts ranting 
that the natives just gotta get over themselves. Or you friend me on social media and immediately start private messaging me and bombarding me with news articles about violence against indigenous peoples, rather than resharing or retweeting so others who don't know can have an opportunity to learn. You're not being brave and you're not being helpful. Believe me, I am well aware of the violence against indigenous peoples. You need to ask yourself, who are you doing that for? And lastly, reconciliation is not putting the burden on indigenous peoples of educating you. Your learning is your responsibility. We are incredibly busy advocating for ourselves and our communities. Delivering learning to you is added labor. And with Google, you have all the information you'll ever need if you just take the trouble to look for it. There's a plethora of indigenous news, articles, stories, scholarship, anything you want at the click of a button. You can learn about our traumas, but you can also learn about our rich cultures, our um, resilience to colonization, and our amazing contributions to Canada. You don't need to continue to ask us to relive our traumas solely for your learning benefit. Okay, now that I got that off my chest, let me tell you what I think reconciliation is. It's what you do at your dinner table. It's the conversations you have with your families when you're watching the evening news. It's what you do when you're prepping to teach your students, drawing on indigenous scholarship, stories, articles, films, to amplify the learning outcomes of your lesson plans, even when the topic you're covering is not about indigenous peoples. Reconciliation is providing your children the right knowledge so that they can respectfully get along with and play with indigenous children. Reconciliation is about being accountable to yourself, to learning and sharing within your circle of influence, to and experiencing the joys and the struggles of life alongside us. Reconciliation is donating your time and money to support indigenous leadership and indigenous led work. It's about reaching out to your elected representatives and asking them to stand up for indigenous justice and indigenous rights, to implement the 94 calls to action from the TRC and the calls to justice from the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and two-spirit inquiry. Reconciliation is speaking up when you hear racial slurs and hate speech, speaking against racial profiling and injustices, and amplifying, not replacing indigenous voices. <clears throat> Reconciliation is knowing that it is uncomfortable to speak up, but doing it because it's the right thing to do, even if an indigenous person doesn't know you're doing it, and being okay with that. Reconciliation is the concrete things you can do every day without unnecessarily drawing attention to yourself. It's about listening, and more importantly, about being able to let go of always having control. Reconciliation isn't dead unless you choose to let it die. Reconciliation can start where you are with what you're doing. Never underestimate the power of a small group of people. Have the courage to be uncomfortable alongside us as you choose the path to reconciliation. Thank you all so much. Can this go with